Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on the second webinar session for this month. Uh, we are delighted to have you join us on a brand new topic, which is how to make photography a power tool for e-commerce. The power of images is not lost on anyone, uh, social media, marketplaces, and to really stand out in the competitive uh, online scenario that you are facing to attract buyers, images and photography can communicate so much more about your product, your business, your brand. And we have today with us um, Vincent and Jocelyn from the Snappy Flight team. Um, I'm delighted to have you. Welcome to um, you both. For, and thank you for hosting our um, masterclass session with the, uh, for our esteemed users. Uh, just a quick introduction to Snappyfly. Uh, Snappyfly is a platform-based solution. Uh, they've been uh, in business since 2017. They're Singapore-based, and uh, they have a lot of experience in actually their domain expertise, which is photography and visual content, um, having served more than 500 uh, small business owners and other sort of e-commerce players. They're also the appointed uh, partners for leading marketplaces here in Singapore, like Redmart, Q10, and Fairprice On. Um, and uh, today they're here to share with us their expertise on how images or visual content can be useful for small business owners in their e-commerce uh, business, and how, what are the various sort of tips and tricks, especially with respect to marketplaces, as well as in social media, what are the things to watch out for, and how to present your business through visual content. So thank you once again, Vincent and Justin. We're delighted to have you here today with us. Thank you. All right, we can uh, switch now to your presentation. Yeah, no problem. Oh, let me just get you. Okay. Um, can you guys see the screen? Yeah, I think we can see a screen. We'll just before you start, I'll just quickly remind everyone if there are any Q and A's or questions that you want to ask of our speakers, please uh, put them down in the Q and A box that you will see on your screen, and we will have some time to allow Vincent and Justin to take all those questions and answer them for you. Please do not raise them in the chat. Um, that way, we will be able to manage the Q and A much much more efficiently and make sure no one's questions are left out. Thank you so much. Yes, over to you, Vincent. Okay, hi. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Vincent and um, I have Justin here with me. So we're going to do this in two parts. Uh, to start off, I'm just going to do a quick um, introduction about ourselves and then later on we'll, we'll go on a, a bit more into the topic. So um, yeah, so if you see, we're going to talk about more on the product photography and um, how it actually is going to help you uh, for your e-commerce site. So, uh, a little bit about us, um, we, we are, we're pretty new. So we started in 2017, about three years back. Um, and we started as the first and only uh, company in Singapore that specializes more in the uh, e-commerce product uh, photography. So what we do is that um, unlike traditional photographers where they do different kinds of um, photographs, we, we basically focused um, purely on e-commerce photos, white backgrounds, um, things that uh, help you to list your items online. And we do that with um, using um, machines rather than uh, the, the traditional uh, means of using uh, light cans and such. So uh, we are able to do uh, them in high volume and, and high speed. And I think we are probably still the only ones that are doing it in such a manner in Singapore right now. And uh, since 2017, we have served over like 500 customers and, and, and done many, many images as well. So uh, just some of our customers here uh, that you see, they have a mix of um, uh, some of these marketplaces that we work with uh, out there, Redmart, uh, Q10, Fairprice, and uh, iShop Changi. Uh, so for those who are in Singapore, these are probably something that that you are, you are pretty familiar with um, from those who are from India. Uh, they are basically uh, the first Red Mart and Fair Price, they are supermarkets here in Singapore. Um, Kuten, iShop Changi, their marketplaces are things like Amazon, but uh, more for uh, 
lo- they are, they're more local, so you might not have heard of the brands uh, back in your country. Um, yeah, we've done for other brands as well, uh, department stores, uh, some of the brands, MNCs, and as well as a lot of small businesses. So uh, myself, uh, I've been working on this for the last uh, three years, but before this, uh, my background, uh, I've been in brand design for the last 16 years. And uh, uh, we started off mainly because uh, there was a need from clients uh, who required images, good images for their e-commerce use um, about three years ago. And we started with this whole new business idea of coming up with with, um, doing this on a a more uh, specialized basis uh, and to make everything more affordable, hassle-free for people. yeah, so I will, I will move on to um, the, what we're going to present today. So just a bit of background that you have heard from us. You can always check out our website later on, um, snappyfly.com, um, yeah, to, to find out a bit of uh, what we do and, and yeah, some of the things that we've done before as well. So uh, for today, we're going to break it into two parts. So I'm going to talk a bit more on the marketplaces, and Jocelyn will come in later on to talk more on the uh, social media. So I think uh, on these two ends, you, most of these people, will, most of you who are on this today, would probably have uh, a Shopmatic site, your own um, uh, online website, who, where you list your products and sell your products. So, aside from that, um, I, I believe many are also looking at uh, making use of Shopmatic uh, to to port your things over to some of the local marketplaces or Amazon and all those things, or even like Facebook to sell your products as well. So um, yeah, so I'm, we're gonna emphasize a bit on how your images are gonna affect uh, listings on marketplaces and your Instagram, and how it can actually, you can also help to make it better. And of course, uh, eventually we want to be able to um, help boost your sales through all these good images. So I'm gonna start off on the marketplaces first. Okay, so uh, I think it's probably not uh, uh, it's something that we, we have gotten a lot of uh, questions from customers before is that when, they want, when you want to photograph a product, depending on what you're selling, um, how do you actually, what, do you, what kind of angles you need to take, what kind of pictures you need to take that help you sell well? So for a lot of sellers, um, like I believe all of you are selling something different on, on your website right now. And um, you probably would have had that question of uh, what should I, how should I actually take the photo? Should it be a front angle? Should it be a close up? Should I have um, some background styling? Should it be white background? Um, and all sorts of things basically. Um, what, what appeals most to my customers? You know, like how is it going to help me boost my sales? So a very simple uh, statement that I will always ask customers to think about is put yourself in the shoes of your customers. So what you're doing right now, um, for, for, for the last decades, we have been used to buying things in the shops. And that's how your customers have always been buying things. So let's say I'm selling clothes, I'm selling shoes, I'm selling bags, I'm selling food. Uh, it's always been done through retail shops and physical shops. So now we're trying to put people onto the online platform and we want to be able then to empower them to be able to make the right decisions looking at pictures on the screen versus them in a shop feeling the actual product. So think about it if you are a, a customer yourself. For example, if I'm selling clothes, you go to a, a, a retail shop that has clothes. What would you actually want to see in that product? From that, you could then think about how you want to then uh, do the photo shoot for your products. So if let's say I'm selling a dress, um, what would my customers want to see? Uh, how can I convince my customer through these photos that I'm putting up that they are going to see nothing less than what they see when they're in the shop? So this is actually a very important uh, uh, thing that you can think about and that will really help you a lot in deciding on, you know, what kind of photos to to have that you can use for your products and eventually list on these marketplaces or on your own website. 
So let's put for some examples. Um, I'm just going to use a few categories of products that are more commonly uh, sold online. So package products. So package products could be um, anything from food, packaged food, uh, uh, frozen frozen food, or it could even be like maybe you're selling say earphones or some electronics that are in boxes and such. So think about it when your customers go to say, for so example, to the supermarket and I have this um, energy and stamina blend right there. What are the things that you as a customer would want to see when I'm holding the physical product itself? So for package products, it's pretty straightforward. In the supermarket, I, I can't open up the, the, the packaging to, to taste the thing inside. So what I will look at is, of course, I, the, the front packaging will entice me to pick up the pr product. It will tell me a lot about the product, you know, like whether this product itself, it's, for example, in this case, it's, it's USDA organic. You know, the, the label itself shows me that it is organic and the design on the labels uh, does give your product a certain image of the product, whether it's a high-end product, it's a mass market product and such. So of course, people want to see the packaging itself. So the front of the packaging is important. Um, the other thing that I, as a consumer, want to see would then be some of the information about this product. So for example, is again, in this case, I want to read about perhaps what are the ingredients in it, um, what are the nutrition information in it, um, yeah, where is it made in, and things like this. So make sure that you have all those things captured in your photos. So it's not going to do, we, we have customers who say that, um, yeah, I don't need to show you know, the nutrition information, I just need to show the front of the package. Then you think about it like, um, if you go to the supermarket and you do not know about this product at all, would you just buy the product by just looking at the front of a package or would you want to turn it around and read some things and then decide you know, whether or not this is right for you? So if, if it's the latter, then of course you should be doing the same thing for online. So why, why are you not showing them something which you want to see when they're in the shop? So that's a very basic um, uh, question that we always ask our customers to think about when they want to decide on what they want to feature. And similarly, like uh, let's say for meat, you know, you go to the supermarket and you want to sell some frozen meat. They might just pack in, uh, um, yeah, on a tray and you can see the meat and you might just decide on buying the meat from, from how the meat looks, you know, whether it's fresh or not. So of course we want to be able to capture how the meat looks itself. So like in, the, in this picture at the bottom, you see that um, we do show uh, a good view of the marbling on the, on the beef itself. Um, one, some things that we also try to do when it's online is that rather than just purely giving the basic information or, or things that people can see in the shops, think about how you can give an additional bonus experience to the customers online. There are actually quite a bit of things that people can see online, which uh, you can't do in stores. So for example, um, yeah, again, back to this meat, uh, this, this piece of beef right here. If you could give them a suggestion of how to cook it or, you know, style it a bit with, with some fresh ingredients to give it a different look and feel, it's going to look much better than when you pick it up from the supermarket. So imagine on this side of the, uh, uh, this, this left hand side picture of this white background picture. It's probably what you're going to get when you go to the supermarket, you see the, that, that, that piece of meat and you have to decide whether you want to buy it or not. But online, you can do more than that. You, know, you could actually show people like, oh, you know, I can start with certain things and make it look like it's, it's, it costs more than it should be. You know, I could also probably show you even a, a, another edition of photo of how I could possibly cook it or how it looks when it's cooked. Um, these are things that you can't really see when you are in the supermarket because that's just what's on the package itself when you pick it up from the fridge, that's it. So think about how you could make good use of you know, the online experience to give people more than what they see in the, in the stores. So similarly for things like bags, fashion. Um, so this, this could work for bags, could work for shoes, could work for you know, any, any other things that might be similar. Um, what people want to look for are the exterior and interior, the material and the texture. So for example, I'm selling a bag and a lady goes to the store you pick up the bag, you would definitely want to look you know, at the bag in, in different angles, the front of it, the side of it, the back of it. Um, and the next thing that you want to try out is, of course, the what's inside. 
So you, you should open it up and, and shoot the inside as well. So you got to show people what's inside because I'm not going to buy a bag without knowing what compartments they are inside, whether or not it, it, it's going to uh, be good enough for me to put the things I want to use on a daily basis. So it's good to show people, you know, what's inside is a zip. Um, yeah. And of course, the next thing that you can do is that to show people how you look with it. You know, like, for example, something like this, where um, when you're holding it, how big it looks, you know, um, how it goes with, say, a casual uh, outfit and such. So these are things that um, people want to see when they go to the shops and try on this bag themselves. So we want to represent this in the same way in, on the online platform. And something else that you could possibly look at in terms of like uh, even online platform nowadays uh, are uh, 360 videos. So um, I have one, let me just exit this for a moment. So I have this sample of a bag here. So this is something which uh, is not so common in most of the marketplaces nowadays, but they are being quite widely used in, in Europe. Um, are 360 videos of your products. So certain products, it's good for you to do such things, you know, where people could spin it around. So as good as I'm, I'm in the store, I can spin it around, I can zoom it in, I can take a look at textures. So if I, when I, the moment I zoom it in, I can actually start seeing, you know, oh, how the texture looks like, the details on it, how this is done nicely. You know, I can spin it around and, and things like that. So it helps people to visualize the actual product and feel that, you know, to, to let them be, be more confident of buying it um, by seeing this thing online versus them just looking at a flat image itself. And um, yeah, so this is some things that you could also, you know, look into in the next um, of how you want to take your products uh, a step further. Okay. And let's look at, say, fashion apparels. Uh, we have things like clothes, um, uh, which is, I think, one of the most common things that people are shopping online or, or ladies love to shop online for, for apparels. And um, what is important, of course, is that I think a lot of people have been always using things like models to shoot the apparels. Um, that is, of course, great. If you have, like, models, it's, it's of course, a good representation of how it will look when it's worn. Um, but at the same time, it's something which is also not, for, especially for small businesses, it's, it's going to be um, quite challenging if you have a small number of um, SKUs or, or the cost of um, engaging a model to do a professional shoot uh, with models, with, with makeup artists and the studio and such uh, may sometimes prove to be pretty costly and, and um, time consuming as well. So the other side of things is that you could do them on, on this product shoots on white background. And um, what we've been doing is uh, we've been doing things like ghost mannequin shots, which is what you see here. And sometimes on the flat lace as well. So what I've shown here, this, this, uh, both this um, white and blue tops, they are what we call the ghost mannequin shots. So if you look at it, they look 3D, three-dimensional, whereby it looks as though someone is wearing it. Um, but at the same time, you don't exactly see the person inside. So this is actually done and shot in studio on a mannequin. And with some editing, we are able to get rid of the mannequin and, and show you how the top or the, the apparel is going to look when it's worn on somebody. So rather than seeing it flat, where you probably wouldn't know how you know, the, the uh, clothes can look when it's worn on somebody, it's good to explore the things like this, like those mannequins, whereby you could then see, um, let your customers have a better view of how it looks. And of course, um, uh, it's important to, whereby sometimes you have got details and textures that you want people to, to, to know of. Um, you should do some uh, uh, close-up shots like this. So this at the bottom here was something that we done for, that we did for sketches. And uh, yeah, so you know, they want to show the texture inside the uh, sports bra. So we actually took a close-up of, of what's inside because this would be some things that you probably will look out for when you're in the shop itself and you, know, you want to feel for it and you want to see what are some of these features inside uh, on, on your apparel as well. So again, like some bonus experience that you give to people that they might not always be able to see uh, when they're in the shop would be that how can I actually come up with some matching outfits? So other than just you know, showing them how this, up, this, this top look, you could always suggest to them that, you know, okay, this top might go well in a casual look, it might go well with 
pair of shorts, when you go out with a pair of pants and such. And, and it actually helps people to decide like, oh yeah, I want this as a workwear. So it's going to look good um, on me when I match it with a black pair of pants or with, with certain things. So this is something again that um, people can, may not necessarily be able to do in stores um, uh, as, as quickly as they do on the screen because you could just flip around, flip around the different images and then see how that apparel might look. Uh, when it goes on with, with something else. So think about, yeah, so just think about how, put yourself in the shoes of your customers and see and, and think about what you want to see in the product and then rethink about whether your current images are sufficient to convince your customers to want to buy them. Um, yeah, so, so something like this, it's a very simple um, illustration of uh, some good and bad images. So uh, we both are actually brown buckle bags. So of course, the, the second one is just taken off um, someone who's, who just snapped it off uh, at home, I guess, against a wall um, or in, in, in your office and your warehouse against a wall. So um, both are the same uh, type of bags, uh, but when it's done in a much nicer way, it gives your whole brand and your product a, a different image and people are willing to pay more for it, even though they are exactly the same thing. So think about as well, look, we look into your, your current images that you're using on marketplaces on your website and such, and yeah, see which they belong. And you know, if you want people to, to be convinced of buying the product, you need to show them that your product looks good, looks professional and not something that, you know, uh, it's, it, it doesn't look that um, appealing for them to buy. So yeah, so these are some things, some things that you can, can think about when you want to uh, take photos for your products. And um, then I'm going on to a bit more specific into some technical details on the different marketplaces. So I'm going to focus more on Redmart, Kuten, and Amazon. Um, Redmart and Kuten being uh, more of a Singapore-based uh, uh, marketplaces. Redmart more on to uh, supermarket products. Kuten uh, generally marketplace for different kind of things, and Amazon, as I think most of us would know what it is. Um, yeah. So why I'm selecting them three is because uh, they do have different image guidelines, and um, I'm going to show you some things that you got to take note of. Uh, so it might apply the same way in in India as well uh, when you look into all those different kind of marketplaces. So for example, in Redmart, uh, for those who are familiar with it, uh, it's part of Lazada right now. And they generally make use of white background images. It's, it's the same for a lot of other supermarkets in Singapore, whereby um, they require you to come up with white background images. Uh, and they want you to, to size the images in a certain way, uh, certain, and, and have them uh, given in a certain resolution and such. So what's important in such uh, marketplaces like Redmart supermarkets and such is that they typically want you to, to show them the fronted image. So if you look at this screenshot on here, every one of the image here has a fronted image and they are sized in a certain proportion and margins. Um, and they want you to show as well a second image that shows the information. So do note that uh, these are things, guidelines on these marketplaces where you do have to follow. Um, and the reason why they come up with such guidelines is because, of course, they have done their research and that um, such images, such pro products with such images will, will sell better than those without. So the guidelines would be like, you know, need to have front and a back shot of the, con of the product information, um, ingredients, uh, nutrition information and such. And uh, for those of you who might be interested in selling on Redmart who are already selling or who are already selling on Redmart, you might also be interested to know that um, uh, they are currently also uh, allowing people to place uh, images like this, style image, whereby you know, it can not just be on white background, but you give a different feel to your products to make them look more appealing when people look at it and they feel that, oh yeah, this looks fresh, this looks um, you know, more, more professionally taken and such. So you could actually add it on as well to differentiate the products from the rest that are just purely using pictures like this. So that's for Redmart. And if you look into things like Kuten, um, Kuten works on a very different model of uh, as a marketplace itself. So they, they work on a, a concept of everybody is free to come up with something different to, 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 and position your products differently to attract people. So they're trying to model it after a real life scenario whereby let's say I'm walking to a, a shopping mall and I have got a hundred different shops in there. 
um, and how I attract people to my shop. It's up to how I want to design my shop, how I want to design my promotions, how I want to design my posters and, and everything else. So they do not set any very specific guidelines to say that, look, I need you to have your images in a certain anger, a certain color, a certain color background or such. They leave their users to, to play around with what kind of um, images you want to uh, feature. So this means that um, if you were to just put in a pure white background image, uh, it may not be as catchy as if you have got certain uh, things like what you see here. So for example, um, people tend to put in brand logos because you know, Samsung is a brand that everybody knows. Honeywell is a brand that is well known. So they, they like to put in you know, big brands, uh, Xiaomi here, uh, and they like to put in things like pricing as well. Like for example, there's gonna be a special offer on this thing. So they put in the pricing big, like if, if it's like some freebies and such, they put in um, more things as well inside each of these little thumbnails. So although it looks pretty different and um, yeah, it, it looks very different in fact from, from what you get in Amazon and Redmart that you see, um, they have their own, um, uh, they, have, they, they do serve this, their own purpose in different marketplaces. So what I uh, would advise, like, you know, if you're looking at going onto different marketplaces, always do, do some research and understand how each marketplace work, um, why they are asking you for certain images, why do people list them in certain ways, um, and understand them better before you put in your images. Because if you're going to use the same images you use on, say, Amazon or, or um, Redmart in Q10, they're probably not going to work as well as they, they do in, in the, the other marketplaces and vice versa. Uh, so you, you got to understand um, the, the people who are going to different marketplaces, what they're looking for, uh, what these marketplaces want you to do. And like I said, different marketplaces, they all have a lot of um, data to do their research on what works best for their marketplace. So um, do understand the guidelines well, follow them. Um, uh, and of course, uh, make full use of what they, they let you do. So for example, in this case, like I said, Q10, they allow you to put in all sorts of, of um, promotional, you know, pricing and all those things. They make good use of them to design your images and put it up so that, you know, you can get the best uh, uh, eyeballs that you, you want one and people will click on it more uh, versus like if you were to just list it on a white background on, on red mark. And the third one itself, it's Amazon, which is something that we're all very familiar with. So from at first glance, if you look at Amazon, you might think that oh, it's, it's pretty similar to red mark, you know, just white background and I just have to give them white background but product image um, and that's it. But um, so we look at, I'm going to just look at this one example inside here. So this, this brand called Yeti is selling a Tumblr and it's selling on Amazon. And if you see that it has this bestseller tag, uh, if you take a look again at the bottom, it's, it has got five stars. Um, it's probably not the cheapest Tumblr around. It's $20. Uh, yeah, I guess it's in US dollars. And then you have someone else who's selling it at, at $13. And of course, there might be some differences, but um, if you look and look at the number that's of comments that they've gotten here is about 40,000 versus the rest is about 2,000 plus. So there must be something right that these people have been doing um, on, on Amazon. So let's take a look a bit about the listing. So for those who are familiar with Amazon, uh, or even if you're not, I, I'll, I'll just explain a bit about what Amazon does is that they will want, they usually recommend that sellers list seven different images for each product. Um, why seven? Uh, again, these are, this are a lot with, with, with research and data that they have uh, worked through and there are certain, there's, there's kind of like a certain reading formula for you to um, put in a combination of product images to make your product sell well. And, um, and yeah, so that's what they're recommending, seven images and not one, not two, because that's not gonna help you sell. Um, and the seven should not be all product images. So if you have a glance of what you see here, there's going to be one good nice shot of your product as the first image. And then they're going to look at things like infographics. So again, if you look at this thumbnails right here, there's some images that have some text in it and explains like this, explains some features in it, the measurements. So they want people to list the measurements because you're buying online. Uh, you can't see the exact thing. You need to know what they're getting. Um, and I think uh, for those who might have 
bought things from overseas, um, you probably, uh, it's not the first thing, first time that you probably have expected something to look a certain size, but when it comes, it might end up in different sizing. And, and that's why Amazon always emphasizes that, you know, uh, for sellers, you should indicate how big or small does the exercising of your product in your infographics. Um, it helps in getting people to be more uh, satisfied with your product when they get it. Uh, it helps for them to re leave good reviews for your products. And of course, it also reduces the rate of returns. Um, yeah, so measurements are important in Amazon. Um, infographics that tells certain features that you want people to know. So you don't just do like a close up of, you know, what's, what's on top, but you, you do put in some infographics, some tags to explain to people what they are looking at. You know, if I look at this cap, I might not know what features, but if I start reading it and say magnets for easy opening and closing, then I, I'm, it might get me interested in, in understanding a bit more about the product. And then, yeah, so these are infographics that you should in, um, include inside your product, your seven product images. And the third category of things that they want you to include, uh, it's usually uh, lifestyle images. So, so take a look at, at this again. The last one here is a lifestyle image uh, of showing how your product can be used and placed in an environment. So uh, if you, now we look back, if you just look at the product image and this, you might not feel very much about this Yeti Tumblr until you see the lifestyle image because it now puts this Tumblr in very rugged conditions on the sea and you have this like uh, this military guy who's holding on to it. Um, yeah, so it, it kind of changed the whole perspective of what this Tumblr is for. It's not a regular Tumblr that, you know, you just... Um, buy off the, the shelves and bring it to work, put it on top of the desk. But it's something that is meant to be very durable, very hardy, very sturdy. You could bring it outdoors. You can bring it to the, the army, you know, the, the, the people in the army uses it. I can bring it to sea and then it's not going to rust. So that's the kind of um, message that they're trying to send to you by just, you know, putting, in, putting this into uh, a simple image like that. Um, and of course, it's, it's not something that you can always uh, shoot. Like for example, I might not have access to a uh, boat to me to shoot this. But um, a lot of, if you actually noticed, a lot of these uh, Amazon images are done to digital, uh, digital imaging. So it's, it's superimposed onto the image itself. So something like this may not have to be shot. You just have to get a stock image that's like that and put it inside. So this helps again to differentiate your products from the other competitive products. So now when I look at this Yeti, I might think that, oh yes, it's probably worth paying um, $30 versus a Tumblr like that, which looks more aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing than you know, um, something which is more rugged. So uh, it gives people a different impression of your product. And if we were to just quickly review this, there are three things which you need to put into Amazon uh, listings and that like white background, infographics, sorry, infographics, and lifestyle images. So, and all this should form up the seven images that you have um, on Amazon listings. So, um, just a quick recap on, um, yeah, this, what I've said here for these three platforms is that uh, basically you need to take a look at um, what each platform requires you and they, they uh, encourage you to put up, look into your products, see how they suit each platform and come up with images that are suitable uh, and appropriate for the target audience and um, the type of listing that each platform um, encourages you to do it because they do help you to increase your sales in these different platforms. Uh, yeah, so I think this, this, this general concept will apply to any of these marketplaces that are in your own country and you should just uh, yeah, yeah, think, think, think of this, think, take it away as you know, a, a very generic guideline and um, think about what you have currently uh, and whether it's sufficient and how, how you might be able to improve that. Okay, so um, that's my part of things right now. Uh, the next part is going to be a bit more onto uh, social media, onto Instagram, which I think probably a lot of you might be interested in as well. So I'm going to be passing it on to um, Justin, who is here with me. Uh, she's going to do, take you guys through the next part of the presentation. Thank you, Vincent. Hi everyone, I'm Jesslyn. So yeah, um, without further ado, let's dive into images on Instagram and how they help to elevate your brand um, on social media. 
Okay, so first things first, um, yeah, let's talk about web because um, I think a lot of us, a, a lot of businesses also, a lot of you guys, um, even before um, going on to social media, you, you guys would definitely have a, a web a web page, which I assume from um, Uma that you guys already have like a Shopmatic um, um, site. Yeah, so um, I just picked out um, uh, an example from, from one of the, the references, which I thought was really, really good. So like, for example, this um, Kutopia um, uh, um, from the, the brand Wenken. Yeah, so, um, so having, a, having a very good, um, having a very clear um, brand statement on your website is really, uh, it's the first um, most important thing before you even um, think about um, going further to do um, social media. So like this, this reference here um, from Wenken, they have a very colorful and, and very bright um, um, slider image, which um, when you when you click on the web, when you go to the, into the website, this is the first thing that you see and you already know what they they, they are selling, what, um, even what, what kind of flavors they have. Yeah. So yeah, so web slider um, featuring a, a stock product, a, a stock photo of uh, their latest product. So, um, and then when you scroll down to um, their website, you can, you can see like the, the other kinds of products that they, they also do, like um, as you can see, Cool Rhino and even um, things like um, medicine, like Core Relief. Um, yeah, so uh, all these um, have very clear and defined categories, which are also very important uh, for a web page. Yeah, so um, yeah, so good photos and visual alignment um, presents a slick look and can really help to elevate your brand. Like um, just now when Vincent talked about the, um, the brown buffer bag, yeah. So um, in, in the same way, good photos um, would definitely help to elevate your brand as well. Yeah, so you have professional, professional looking visuals and that will present a very good um, brand image amongst your consumers. And then also um, it will definitely form a positive impression um, um, in, their, in their minds. But um, do we want to stop there? We, we don't. Um, we want to connect. Um, so yeah, like some, just some statistics. So out of like um, this much, um, out of like 4.54 billion um, internet users, about Three, or three billion of them are active on social media and each user um, spends like at least two hours on social media daily, um, be it on your, on your transport, uh, even at home, after work, you know, just, just winding down uh, after a long day. So a lot of us, um, we spend um, um, a lot of time on social media actually. Yeah, and um, each, um, with each passing year, um, the users on social media also, also increases, yeah. So um, it's definitely important to to um, to gain a social social presence also on social media, yeah. And with connection, especially when you build connection, um, you build a rapport amongst your your consumers as well. Um, and uh, as as brands, uh, it's very important to keep that connection um, going. So and that's what we we want to do um, so that uh, it will eventually um, uh, you eventually end up in more sales. Okay, so about six in 10 um, Instagram users log in at least once a day. Uh, and yeah, it's the second most logged in social media after Facebook. And they spend about one hour per day on, on Instagram. So yeah, time spent on a social network is a strong indicator of an engaging platform. So I mean, apart from um, Instagram, you can definitely also use like Facebook, which um, a lot of people are also using. Uh, it depends on your market or on your target audience rather, yeah. So, oops, let me just, okay. Okay, so yeah, Instagram has, has become a, a, a very ideal feed for e-commerce marketing. So 83% of Instagram users discover new products and services on the platform. Um, and 80% of them decide whether to buy a product or service um, uh, on, on Instagram. So uh, I believe a lot of you would know, like um, when, you, when, you, when you browse stories or you, you just look at Instagram posts um, on your feed, um, you, you can see a lot of promoted content um, based on things that you, you search for, like um, 
for example, I, I, I've been seeing a lot of dessert, <laughs> dessert stories um, whenever like, I, I read my friends' um, stories because uh, I've been talking about like cookies, um, thinking about cakes. Uh, so I, I see a lot of promoter content on that, yeah, for example. Okay, yeah, so 66% of um, Instagram users say that they will use Instagram to interact with brands and 53% would, would follow a brand for its content alone. Yeah, and yeah, so this stats, 72.5% um, are, are images. So it still proves that ima images are still the way to go for Instagram. Yeah, but of course, um, with each um, passing year as well, videos uh, have been gaining more and more traction. Yeah, so that's something that uh, you might also want to consider looking at. Yeah, and also um, if, I guess also like if, if you are planning to target more, um, uh, if your target audience is more of like uh, millennials or um, people in their early 30s kind, you, you can consider Instagram as your uh, main platform to connect with your consumers. Um, but if you're, if you're targeting like the older crowd, um, uh, like people in their 30s to 50s probably, you can um, consider Facebook as a, as a um, stronger uh, marketing tool. So it really depends on your, your target audience. Okay, so yeah, how do we how do we use um, Instagram's marketing tool? Uh, so let's look at this um, this example. So Fresh Beauty. So they use Instagram stories um, to to tell more about themselves. So you can see like a um, gift. Um, so at the at the right, at the top of their profile, you, you can really look um, at um, their latest product like kombucha, um, lip care, uh, lip care products, uh, even things that they, they stand for like pride, um, and um, also yeah things like girl power, feminism. They it, it's all quite um, um, prominent on their on their profile alone, and even all all these um, having having all these stories. Um, that you regularly post and you put in your highlights. All these are uh, highlights, by the way. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so all these would definitely help you to um, uh, set your your brand apart from your, your competitors. You know, um, like like hey, I believe in, in I believe in in pride. I believe in um, feminism, for example. Yeah. So if you if you put put all this down, um, it will yeah some some it it, it might draw uh, more um, more consumers to to follow your brand. Okay, so let's look at another example. So this is uh, one of our clients, um, Keller Lily. So they they bought um because um a part of our our business is that we also um sell um we we sell machines as well, um and also the machines that um, we use um because we 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 do we use like an automated uh, uh, system to to produce our, our product images so uh, we also sell them as well and this is one of our customers who who bought our machines to to take photos of her her jewelry yeah so all this white background um these white background images are are done um with her her own um with with the machine yeah after she bought it from from us, so um, this is how she she brand, she brands herself um, on her on her Instagram feed. So there's things like product assembly, um, product usage, white background, as well as themed photos. So um, product assembly uh, it's quite um, um, self, self self explanatory, yeah. Um, product usage. So um, so if it's yeah like a necklace, you know, you just wear it on your neck, um, and various accessories as well. Um, then also white background and also team team photos. Um, so I guess you can see um, from this reference here, uh, there's a lot of green involved. So like green, blue, turquoise, and um, team photos are also what you can use to kind of like um, uh, fit into your 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 color scheme for your for your for your feet. Yeah, and um, color feet is also quite. Um, Quite a popular, um, quite a popular uh, usage of photos for for your feed. Like for example, um, maybe January you you you, you want to use the color yellow because um, it's um, it's spring, yeah. And like for example, in March you want to use the color blue, and you, you can you can um, 
you can, you, you can plan, plan your feet according to the color as well. So this is what um, this brand did. Um, she used a team photo to, to um, kind of like uh, plan her, her feet to, to use these colors. So this is another of our customers who decided to use um, stock image as stock images as um, the the main content of their feed. So they they, they are a, a beauty a beauty product um, distributor. So they distribute a lot of products from um, Korea, um, US, etc. So um, and they even included um, things like um, product benefits as well as like how to and tutorials. So um, if any of you are selling like uh, beauty products or face products, you can even uh, consider this kind of um, feed for, for your Instagram. Um, yeah, so things like how to, um, like how, how, to, how to use your products um, and even things like um, uh, the... Um, how how like the, the product changes your face um from like maybe um acne prone uh, for example if, if it's like a egg uh, acne uh, acne care product so you, you can take like before and after yeah like the the progress to, to show like the the product uh, how 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 useful it is you know to to your to your consumers and you know when consumers they see that they say hey you know like there's there's really a change um then they'll be more interested in your, in your product and they'll lead eventual sales. Yeah, so things like also product benefits um, will also help. Like, uh, for example, this, this example here, um, ascorbic acid. Yeah, so uh, it, it, will, it will also um, be useful for your consumers to know what they're buying, you know, to know what goes into their product. Yeah, which I think is also um, very, it's, it's, it's a common trend these days. Um, people, People want to know more about um, the things that they, they eat, things that they put on their skin. Yeah. So another example, Red Mart. So um, product show, uh, yeah, so uh, a few things that they, they did would be like uh, product showcase, um, repost or review, infographic, um, as well as means or trends. So product showcase, um, because Red Mart, um, as most of you are familiar with, um, those who are in Singapore will be quite familiar with their groceries, um, kind of like supplier. So they, they supply um, products from like all, all kinds of, um, from all, a lot of countries as well. Yeah, so, um, so for example, uh, this month is uh, the Mid-Autumn Festival. So um, uh, mooncakes are in season, yeah. So they would do like a product showcase, um, yeah. Then um, um, repost or review would be um, your from your customers. So uh, if yeah, so it it will also be very useful for for your brand to um to also um, repost um what um uh your customers um post to also show. To also show that you know, like, hey, you know, um, this this person so and so use my product, especially if like, um, your one of your customers is like a, a celebrity, yeah, all the more, uh, it will it will be it will be like free free advertising, you know, um, uh, for for your own brand, yeah. So like this user, she he or she used uh um uh ingredients bought from Red Mart to create this dish, and so Red Mart like, hey, um, this photo looks great, let's post it, yeah. So this does this is something that um you can consider um, memes or trends. Um, this, it's also uh, very popular amongst, um, uh, amongst millennials to, to uh, kind of like also post it up to uh, gain more traction amongst, uh, amongst them if that's your target audience. Uh, infographic uh, are also useful. It, it's something like the um, previous, previous, the, oops, yeah. Um, the product benefits for ascorbic acid, yeah. So these infographics are, are, are useful for, for people who want to know more about your product or um, like for example, uh, last month we, there was the seventh month. So um, yeah, so very much they, they did like a, 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 a infographic team on like how to, how to keep your woo away uh, at bay. Yeah, so I thought it was quite cute. Okay. So with more people um, getting, spending, spending more time online these days, um, you see also more wholesome and um, lifestyle content um, um, being used as well. So I guess like the, the, the trend has, uh, the trend from 
just um, moving everything online or uh, moving most things online um, has also kind of like uh, moved to, towards like more wholesome and more lifestyle. People want to see more, uh, more than just um, you advertising your product. They also want to see uh, like, hey, like your, your product story, um, how you came about, um, or even things like, uh, like you know, the, um, how to better use your product. Like uh, just now also the, the, the Yeti water bottle. Yeah. Um, it's placed in a very rugged um, condition. So people are like, hey, you know, I can, I can use this for, um, I can take this with me on, camp, on, on camping trips, for example. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so this is just a, a recap on like what you can include for your feed. So customer re reviews or reposts, um, your brand or product story, infographics or how-tos, and yes, um, please make use of I, um, IG stories. It's a very, very useful tool um, to, to help elevate your brand as well. And definitely pictures help to story tell. Oops. Okay. So yeah, it's also very important to plan out your IG um, feed um, to look at it as a grid, um, like the one here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, you know, like, like for example, Red Mart, um, Every post is in red on it, it uh, it's on red background. So um, once you see like a a, a red background, like okay, red mud. <laughs> so um, it, it helps it to, to stand out, you know. So um, try to think of like uh, your brand, like, you know, like what what would make me stand out? Like um, for example, like um, Tiffany and Co. You know, um, once you see that that turquoise shade shade, um, you're like, hey, Tiffany and Co. You know, uh, once you see that that um that their logo of theirs you already know it, it's from them so um yeah try to think of um something that will help help your brand to stand out it could be even like um right um posting your 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 comp uh your brand's watermark on on every image yeah to help you stand out more and help you help your consumers to remember your brand because they are always um they're always uh, looking at so much content you know so you want to to be memorable to them yeah so um yeah, uh, to, to look at them as a grid and not um, individual posts as well because, um, you know, sometimes um, uh, as consumers, um, uh, it, it will be hard for you to, um, to, to, to just like plan, um, to also just plan uh, by looking, by, to just plan out your grid as well. So uh, some, some useful um, planners will be um, preview and hood sweep to help you to, to see. Um, so what they do is they they uh, they allow you to come to um, do like placeholder posts um, so that you can look at it as a as, as a whole um, like three six or eight, or like nine nine posts at a time to to look at to look at it um, and, and see whether uh, it it um, it uh, matches your 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 brand color scheme for, for for the month or even as a whole um, of of your brand. Oops. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so uh, I've come to the end. So apart from photography, we also provide services for your graphic needs as well. So things like um, your how tos, your um, your uh, like survival guide and stuff, we we can help you to do as well. Um, as you have from Vincent also, um, in his previous experience uh, in, in graphic design. So um, if you have any questions, uh, you can also um, email us uh, at snappy at snappyfly or even look at our website at snappyfly.com, our Instagram, snappyflysg, and also um, feel free to, to like us on, on Facebook as well. So, okay, we'll open up some time for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Vincent and Justin. Um, very interesting nuggets of information that you've shared with us on how to use imagery for marketplaces and social media. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all of that information. I know you seem to have been battling a little bit of cold as well, Justin. So uh, thank you for plowing through and really sharing.